Ever since the Nash fire and the Irving suspension, the Brooklyn Nets have gone forward one and have named Jock Vaughn their official head coach. A lot of those wins have come against weaker opponents like the Wizards, Hornets, and Knicks, but it's obvious that the Nets have come back strong. So what really changed? Even just by looking at the box score, you can see that the Nets have not given up more than 96 points in each of the last five games. While points aren't the greatest standard to show in how great a team is defensively, giving up 119 points to 96 is still a pretty significant difference. During Nash's short tenure as the Nets head coach this season, the Nets wanted to switch pick and rolls as much as possible. You could do this, but you'll get beat if a star sees the same coverage multiple times, which is what happened against Luka and the Mavericks. The Nets and Mavs played twice, once with Nash and once without him, and the results were much different. In Game 1, Luka spent the bulk of the game picking on the Nets guards, especially Kyrie Irving in the post and making plays. Here he spins off Kyrie and just misses the layup, but there was no help. Every time Luka posted up on a smaller defender, the Nets looked lost, not knowing each person's assignment. Kyrie and Durant get mixed up, and Irving ends up being the final line of defense, which is not ideal when you have JaVale McGee at the dunker spot. Whereas in Game 2, Durant gets in front of Powell so there's no direct pass, and O'Neal splits the difference, which forces Luka into a fadeaway jumper. In Game 1, the Nets allow Luka to manipulate the defense. When you allow him to dribble more than three or four times and have him survey his options, it's a lot harder to know who he's looking for. Here, Luka dribbles all the way in the paint and moves O'Neal and Simmons by looking at Hardaway but throws a nice pass to McGee for another dunk. But in Game 2, the Nets didn't allow Luka to manipulate the defense as much. They did this in multiple ways. First, they had the near side defender come help and the big man shading him underneath by doing that, you know where the first pass is going and you can rotate accordingly. They also switch the defender on the pass to the post. Here Durant anticipates the pass to Luka and switches to him so there's no mismatch. There is also much more resistance at the point of attack. In the pick and roll, the Nets made it harder for Luka to attack the switch. The Nets assigned Durant to Luka and he pushed through screens harder, which allowed weaker defenders to get back to their initial assignments. Luka had some trouble with the longer Durant in terms of shooting over him. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it's about making it harder for him to score. Besides switching, the rotations looked a lot different in Game 1 compared to Game 2. In Game 1, the Nets weren't sure who was switching to who. On the post-up, Sumner comes and helps. Kyrie is flat-footed and doesn't run out to Bullock for the 3. You can see Sumner starting to rotate to the corner, but stops after he sees Irving there. On the Dinwiddie post-up, O'Neal comes and overhelps a bit and is slow to the corner. Irving also doesn't do him any favors by just ball watching instead of communicating with O'Neal. On the Luka post-up, Durant comes and helps off the nearest defender, but Irving doesn't split the difference between Bullock and Finney Smith and it's a wide open three. In Game 2, it looked a lot different. Curry guards the initial penetration by Dinwiddie and races to the wing as he sees the ball rotate and puts up a good contest on Hardaway. On the inbound, Hardaway gets a step on Cam Thomas, but O'Neal makes sure to help to discourage a shot. On the drive, Simmons helps and gets a nice steal. Speaking of Simmons, he went from one of the better defenders in the league to one of the players that Luka wanted to attack. Despite his stature, he didn't want to put any resistance on him. In fact, here I don't think he even touched him for a Luka easy layup. I'm not sure if it's due to a lack of confidence, but he gives Luka a lot of space to do what he wants, which makes his length meaningless. Just two years ago, he was assigned to Luka and gave him a hard time by using his hands to disrupt his dribble and length for any shot. It's not only just his offense that has taken a hit, but his defense as well. He's been less active and less confident in the areas that made him a good player. But while Simmons has been a massive disappointment for the Nets defensively, Nicholas Claxton is doing exactly what Simmons is not doing. Luka tried picking on Claxton a lot in the second game, and he was up for the challenge. Claxton has great length and quick feet, which is great when you need to guard someone like Luka. He uses his hands, but is not overzealous where Luka could draw a foul. As a result, this led to a ton of tough stepbacks and fadeaway jumpers. It's been known for a while around the league that he is capable of doing this, and this is a rarity for big men. While the Nets have looked great defensively, there's still a lot to clean up on the offensive end. 
It was widely known that the Boston Celtics had come up with a game plan to slow down Durant in the playoffs, which had started to become replicated across the league. Durant likes facing up on the wing, but this has become a thorn to the Nets offense because of their inability to take advantage of the double teams with or without Kyrie Irving. When Durant gets doubled, he often spends a few seconds waiting for an available pass, and by the time he makes the first one, the defense is already recovered, which stalls the possession. Here the Mavs double and O'Neal is open, but Durant takes a couple extra dribbles. By the time he passes it, there's only two seconds left, and as you can see, Harris was wide open for a three, but that opportunity isn't there because of the shot clock. That's why I think the Nets need to run more pick and rolls instead of Durant faceups. When the roller is in the middle of the floor, there's a clear 4v3 that makes it easier to find the open man. When Durant and Simmons are on the floor together, they should run more pick and rolls with Simmons at the 5 if you know the defense is doubling, but they only ran this once against the Mavs which turned into an open corner 3. Overall they had more success because they were the first available pass to the roller. Without Durant, the Nets have a hard time scoring. Against the Mavericks, they only scored 9 points in 9 minutes with KD on the bench. They tried some lineups with Simmons at the 5, but because Ben has primarily become a screener now, Guys like Cam Thomas and Joe Harris need to put the ball on the floor and try and make a play. It's obvious that Simmons hasn't really gained that confidence back on offense. He has Christian Wood one-on-one -on -one in transition, and he decides to pass it instead of trying to score. Just two years ago, he was going 1v1 against Rudy Gobert and using his left hand to score. Now, he has been strictly using his right hand and shying away from contact. Against Dwight Powell, he spins away from him and tries to use his right hand for a floater, Compare this to two years ago when he would put his chest into Derek Favors and finish for an and one. If the Nets are going to provide Durant some help, it's going to have to become from Simmons until Kyrie comes back, but he needs to get back to doing what he was doing in Philly, attacking aggressively and embracing contact. He's averaging about five shots a game, which is a far cry from his 11 in Philly, and there's no excuse, especially when Kyrie is not on the floor. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Brooklyn Nets transformation. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.